Hello guys, in this uh, video tutorial we'll be talking about protein-protein interaction. So protein-protein interaction is probably the one of the most important things you should know about our cell, the magic of cell. Whatever task you're seeing, whatever thing you're looking at right now is due to the protein-protein interaction. Everything in our body, it is made up with, literally made up with proteins and it's, it's, it's everywhere, protein is everywhere. Whatever you're seeing literally is a protein body, protein content. So Protein protein interaction is the most vital thing inside the cell because for the functional perspective, right? And also for the structural perspective. So why we require protein protein interaction? I'm giving you some examples and you can figure out the rest. One is the muscle. Muscle contraction is possible due to the protein protein interaction. Remember between actin myosin filaments. Then cell signaling any kind of cell signaling and signal transduction you will see the interaction between different proteins protein protein interaction cellular transport molecule coming out and going inside the cell using protein protein interaction so you can see some of the biggest physiological some of the biggest cellular functionalities are there due to the protein-protein interaction and morally biochemical pathways so these are some of the examples and these are heavy players we know so they are present in everywhere every single bit of the cell protein-protein interaction is the functional assembly of the cell so what are the different types of this interaction? We know that one protein is interacting with others. If that single protein is present inside the cell, it is not that much functional. But together, all the proteins are functioning with themselves. That is again telling us, united we stand. So the same thing is telling us there. The proteins are cross-talking with themselves by the signaling processes via chemical signaling and other signaling methods and they are interacting with the, themselves. They are spreading their thought, they are giving the idea to the cell to do certain things. Cell division and every cell signaling is everywhere. Immune system, if this protein-protein interaction is not there, uh, if you get sick, you never get uh, recovered from that. So all these things are there. Now there are certain types of protein-protein interaction I'm not going to talk about because uh, it contains everything in our cells. So I cannot talk about everything like that in this small video. I'm just going to tell you the, why it is important and what are the different types of interaction. The protein-protein interaction can be divided in different types based on their different features. So one of the types that I'm going to talk about here, two or three different types. One is that it, first of the type is based on, uh, let's say, uh, the protein-protein interaction based on the, the, the stability. The stability. Stability of protein-protein interaction, we can divide into two di different parts. One is uh, the stable, another one is transient. Stable interaction, transient interaction between proteins. Now the example for the stable interaction, most of the cases the stable interactions are present in case of hormones because they are always active, always present in our body. So they are stable. The interaction between different hormones in our body is always stable. And if it is becoming destable, we have a horrible problem in our body. If you look at the transient type, the example is small. I am giving a small example. It's G protein, sorry. It's G protein coupled receptor, GPCR. So, G-protein coupled receptor is a ty type of transient interaction. Remember, G-protein coupled receptor, actually, there are three types of G-protein, alpha, beta, gamma, right? So, once the signaling is going on, alpha is separated from beta and gamma. So, it's very, very transient. It's not stable at all. So, many of the cell signaling molecules are belonging to the transient type of interaction between themselves. Now, the second type that we are going to see here is the type of type based on you've seen the based on stability now let's say uh, we see the based on the structure structural feature so based on the structural feature what we can tell again two different types based on the structural feature one is homo oligomer other one is 
হেটেরো অলিগোমার অলিগোমার মিন্স নাম্বার অফ সাব ইউনিটস মোর দ্যান ওয়ান হোমো মিন্স সেম টাইপ অফ সাব ইউনিটস প্রেজেন্ট হেটেরো মিন্স মাল্টিপল ডিফারেন্ট টাইপস অফ সাব ইউনিটস আর প্রেজেন্ট নয় এগেন হোমো অলিগোমার্স আর প্রেজেন্ট মোস্ট অফ দ্য টাইম ইন কেস অফ ডিফারেন্ট এনজাইমস ডিফারেন্ট বায়োকেমিক্যাল এনজাইমস দ্যাট ফাংশনস নর্মালি ইন আওয়ার বডি বাট হেটেরো অলিগোমার্স মিন্স এগেন দ্য এক্সাম্পল ইজ দিস জি প্রোটিন আই এম টেলিং ইউ জি প্রোটিন কাপল রিসেপ্টার্স থিংস enzymes and carriers of the enzymes all these things are belonging to the homo oligomer type same type of subunits producing the enzyme and enzymatic subunits and they function properly in our body hetero oligomer like g protein uh, alpha beta gamma there are different shapes different structures out there that is present and so this is about the structural feature now the third thing here is based on what kind of chemical interaction they are having whether the interaction is very strong i've seen the interaction about stable and transient but the interaction is depending on the chemical bonding on interaction and again we can divide it into two different part one is covalent interaction other one is non covalent interaction if we look at for the covalent interaction the examples for the covalent interaction types are most of the time enzymes uh, post translational modifications like disulfide bridges disulfide bonds ion interactions and all these things are present sumoylation and all these post translational modifications they are covalent modifications permanent changes but for the non covalent modification this is more common in metabolic pathways as well as signal transduction pathways like phosphorylation remember phosphorylation phosphorylation can take place and then again dephosphorylation will take place so these are the different types of chemical bonding patterns that are found so in all these cases that we see here all of these cases the different types like based on stability structure and chemical bonding features but they ultimately are protein protein interaction that is the heart of the functionality of a cell and we can measure the protein protein interaction in many different processes many assays are there one of the most famous assays to to assess this protein protein interaction is called east 2 hybrid system east 2 hybrid system and if you want to know about is two hybrid system more you can watch my video on is two hybrid system you will find the video in my channel i hopefully put a link here in the description as well as annotation but you can find it there so in this sense this is protein protein interaction these are complex interactions but actually they are giving us functionality like this so do not underestimate protein protein interaction so that's it guys if you like the video hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this as well as share this video with your friends Thank you.